John Chapman. People don't need to see John this. John Chapman giving the fans right one. No, you get, literally no one wants to see this. Show me the damn video. <laughs> that is so offensive. Shorts are not good for snatching. How do you feel about that? Well, that would have been fine. No one would have known about really it. Lucky, there's, the lucky there's no razor blades on that bar. Jeez. Right, I'm going to go meet the boys. You're going to be... You're gonna be up to a new 1RM snatch by the time I get back. So you know this one, Matt's making his appearance, but I'm gonna bring it out. We've got new guests. The boys are here. Do right, I boys. <laughs> Who are the boys? Introduce yourself. So we're Tibbs Fitness. I'm Josh. Yeah, follow us on Insta. And Lewis, Tibbs Fitness. Josh, Lewis, Tibbs Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> They're joining us, so us boys are going to have a workout today. We think we've just decided that it's going to be work up to a heavy snatch to start with, and then we're going to do a pairs or a partners workout, which is going to be a bit of chibber. Oh, oh, yeah, Josh has got, gonna... his, he's got his little writing pad out. I'm now going to rise he's out. concoct a workout of a chipper. But all we've decided so far is that these two, because they're also brothers, they cannot work together. No, it will not be good. It won't be good. It won't be conducive to a good workout. It won't end well. So we will just do rock, paper, scissors for who gets the workout with Matt. <laughs> and then the other person's going to be with me. Matt, give me your stats. Current 1RM snatch. 115. Today? Probably 40. <laughs> Current 1RM snatch. 67 and a half. What are we going for today? I'll be happy with 40 today, I think. What is wrong with you boys? Current 1RM snack. 75. What are we going for today? 80 kilos. Yes! That's what we like to see. Oh, we're going to go for a conservative 40. These two old men over there. My current 1RM snatch is 90. Today I'm going for 170 kilos. Yeah. Big confidence, boys. 1RM already? Go on, eh? <laughs> These boys are serious game over here. There's me over there warming serious. up on the snatch already. You boys haven't even left the old warm-up zone yet. <laughs> Matt's still putting his clothes on. Yeah, like, oh, what do I wear to today, boys? For the reggae. For the reggae. For the reggae. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got a up price on y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 all the hay. I won't get a ball today. Got lost in the ball today. Sorry, I was fascinating over my own lift that I didn't bump you on your PB. Well done. Super, super stoked with that. I had a slight bend in my right arm, but I was saying like, I've been working so hard this year to try and get both of those arms straight in and out in my lifts. Everything obviously when we get up to the 1RM starts to get a little bit shaky, but a few months ago I wouldn't have even been able to get under that purely because both of my arms would have been bent down like I was doing a bicep curl. Right arm was super tight beforehand, I should have stretched my bicep out a little bit more and it would have looked a little bit prettier. But to break the 90 barrier and get into 92 and a half, that is phenomenal. I'm very happy. Both the Chipsy boys PV their snatch as well. Now we're going to move on to a bit of a chipper. Um, let me have a look what it is. We're doing all the what we got. And, uh, is in the well, we're now talking about it. it. We're now talking about it. He wants to go more toes to bar. What do you want to do? What? what are we doing? Toes to bar. Thrusters. Well, and Thrusters, air bike, pull ups, and double unders. In what numbers? So we're going numbers. 50 toes to bar. 40 as a pair. As a pair. 40 thrusters. 30 pull ups, 20 air bike cal each, and then 100 double ones after each round. How many rounds? Five rounds. Oh! Woo! Leon's looking like he's gonna die because he has to do all the burpees and lifters. Oh my god. Hi Leon. You're a dick. Team number one is. Oh my god. <laughs> Team number two, all the games. Dwarf and dwarf here. <laughs> <laughs> We've established this is probably going to be about a 40 minute workout. So, uh, strap in, kids. I'm too good to you. I'm too good to I'm too 
So that was Mingin. We just went outside. Josh has been sick. He was my partner. Matt, how horrible was that? That's one of the worst workouts I think I've ever done. Oh my Full God. stop. How was that? I'll second that. One it's... of the worst conditioning pieces I've ever done. Give it a go. And Josh Give it is... a go. Josh has been sick outside. How are you feeling, mate? <laughs> how epically Boys. bad was that? Cool. Worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> One mile. Right, I'm going home. Well done, mate. Session. I'm big man. Hi, Leon. Always a pleasure. You thought that was easy. Honestly, that was a piece of fish. Smash dick. <laughs> right. Back home. Recover. Back cave. Right, we're home. And before we get into our back cave subject, I thought it would actually be really nice to show you the kit that we got sent by Heavy Rep Gear. So, two seconds. We have got... Bad boy long sleeve t-shirt. This is actually meant to be a lot more fitted than this. I obviously need to grow. Short sleeve version. Lovely black number. Beautiful blue. I think it brings out my eyes, baby. I saw Zach wearing this pink hoodie and I've wanted it for ages. And two very awesome snapbacks. So, thank you very much Heavy Rip Gear. I'm actually gonna put your link in the description box because you know what? It's amazing. For all the time we've been doing this YouTube thing and companies like yourself still feel like we're cool enough to be rocking your gear. So I really, really do appreciate it. So guys, if you like any of their kit, follow the link in our description box. Oh, I'm so strong. And go and get some of their kit, because it's quality. So there you go, I'm now gonna keep this on to do our, to do our back cave. Give me a second. Right, so I threw it out to Instagram today for the back cave subject and I have picked this question by Helen Drew 48 And also thank you for your question, Helen, and thank you to everybody else. This one is amazing and it's very poignant because I've been working with some of my clients to get them ready and prepared mentally and physically for the festive period. The question is, festive period, mindset with food, training and balancing it all. This is a very, very complex subject but I want to make it as easy and simple as we possibly can. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the whiteboard and we're going to thrash it out and all of you guys and girls are going to feel awesome and prepared for this festive season. Cool, I have bigged it up. Let's go. So managing the festive period is a mixture of a few things. But the first thing, and it may sound a little bit negative to some people, but I look at December is a completely different month to the rest of the year. January, again, I look at that slightly differently and we can come to that on a different subject. But December is damage limitation month, right? It's not about getting new PBs. It's not about losing a ton of weight. It's about setting yourself up with the best possible scenario to not go into the new year lacking motivation and drive, right? So I say to my clients, say you come up to me and you're like, I keep standing on this because it makes me feel a little bit taller. My goal is fat loss. I'm like, okay, cool. We're gonna to aim to lose one to two pound a week progressively over a period of time until you get to your goal. But if that goal happens to fall during the month of December, my goal for you is to gain no more than five pounds. And they go, Leon, my goal is to lose weight. But December, I've been there. I've worked with so many different clients who go, Marching into November like, right, this year I'm not going to drink any eggnog, I'm not going to drink any beer, I'm not going to have any mince pies, I'm not going out and I'm not going to do anything over Christmas. I'm going to carry on losing two pounds a week all the way through Christmas. I'm like, tally-ho, enjoy that. I'll pick it up mid-January when you're pissed off and you have got no motivation because you're frustrated because you fell off the wagon, right? It happens. Stop deluding yourself. It happens to all of us, right? And it's so much easier as a coach and as a client, 
When you're in the gym and you come back in a new year and you set yourself a number, which might not be you know, two pounds a week every single week to lose over December, amazing. It's not a viable goal. That's like turning around and saying when you wanna build muscle, I wanna build a stone of muscle in the next two weeks. It's not gonna happen. You're setting yourself up to lose. There's around 2% of our population that I think can genuinely carry on gung-ho through this Christmas period. Normally, most of those people have got like a show. They're like the bodybuilders who have to cut down over Christmas. I've heard it where people carry on dieting and they've got all of their family eating around them Christmas dinner and they're sitting there eating out of a Tupperware box. I'm like, respect, you know, most of us aren't tuned that way. So when I turn around and say to someone, I want you to gain no more than five pounds, they're just losing their mind because they're like, but my goal is to lose weight. We can lose that five pounds in a couple of weeks, but am I able to get you mentally back into a place where you're driven and adherent to a plan again in two weeks? If you've overindulged, you've had some fun, you've lived your life a little bit and you've come back and you've gained five pounds which you weren't wanting to in your head. It's gonna take me a lot longer. And I'm gonna use this as an example to give you a little bit more understanding as to why and how that can tend to happen. Right, so I'm gonna use the example. Say somebody trains five times a week, right? This is December. I'm gonna do it in 30s, because you know some months we've got 30 days, some we've got 31. I know it can kind of change. But let's just use this as a classic example. So say the person trains five days a week. So every five days, they're gonna have the weekend off. So two days here, they're gonna do these five days, they're gonna take these two days off here. Give me a second. There we go, I'll scratch them all out now. So I hope you really like oh, blood, sweat, and tears for this channel. Huh. Right, so over that period of time, over a usual month, they are losing eight days, right? This is getting very clinical, but this just gives a little bit more of an understanding to people. Like the eight days of potential training or potential fat loss or whatever it may well be, depending on what your goal is, is completely lost out of that 30 days. So at this point, we're left with 22 days to potentially change our body. What happens in December? Right? I'm gonna generalize here. So no disrespect to anyone who turns around and goes, well, that isn't me. Right, most of us have got a job, right? Okay, cool. So what happens at Christmas? We have a Christmas party. There's another day. What happens with most of our friends? Oh, let's all go on a Christmas pub crawl. There goes another day. Then, what else have we got? We've got Christmas day. But not only have we got Christmas Day, we've got Christmas Eve. And for a lot of people, especially in the British population, we've got Boxing Day, right? That is the obvious ones. And then we move on by a few days. We've got New Year's Eve. Don't pretend that you're gonna go to the gym on New Year's Day because you're gonna be hung over to you know what I mean. Right, so at this point, the potential amount of days that we've got to change our body has already gone down. And 99% of people watching this video are gonna go and turn around and say to me, well, I don't do this and I don't do that in December. Just track your December, right? Most people, this is, I know I'm generalizing it, but most people will set up their Christmas period like this. And this is the obvious ones. Right, and this is before we turn around, we get around, most of us will get to the end of the month or around the 18th, that's when we normally have our Christmas periods, we get two weeks off from work and all that kind of stuff. I know some of us work through Christmas, especially emergency services, you guys are fucking awesome, thank you so much for doing that. But a lot of us will have two weeks off and do you know what happens when routine goes out the window? You go, ooh, all right babe, fancy going out for a meal today? Yeah, why not? Let's go out and indulge. It's Christmas after all. Let's lose another day. And then, every now and again, we have those days where we're like, lads, do you wanna come round? Sofa day? What are we up to? Oh no, let's go down, let's go down the pub. Couple of pints, couple of pints, all right? Let's say, let's say we do two spontaneous days. What's happening to this? this wonderful calendar of full 30 days. How many days of potential change have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 days left, right? 13 days, and that is before we have any more spontaneous actions. 
any more where we go and meet the families and we go and hang out and we eat a shit ton of shortbread biscuits. Oh, I love them. But do you know what I mean? You've, you're giving yourself 13 days. The average person will have the first two weeks of December to do all of the work and accumulate all of that change that they will normally have 22 days to do. You know what? We're losing a lot of days, a lot of time, a lot of extra calories. So this is why I say to my clients, I'm like, in 13 days, if you can absolutely boot it and kick ass and just get some in the bank, then happy days. But understanding just the different amount of time that you're actually spending in the gym helps a lot of people come to terms with the fact that they're like, yeah, realistically, I'm not really gonna be able to do that much. You know, so if they turn around and lose two pounds a week for those two weeks, they're totally on track. But when they then turn around over the next two weeks, which they're not normally gonna spend in the gym because they're doing their Christmas thing and actually living their life, as I really encourage, they might gain two pounds a week. So when I turn around and say, you know what, if you don't gain any more than five pounds, that's just an average of two pounds a week over two weeks, you've given yourself an extra pound because then you can have a chocolate orange, an extra pint, that kind of stuff you're gonna come back into the new year and go, you know what, I haven't gained any more than what my coach told me to, or I haven't gained any more than what I told myself or allowed myself to, and you're gonna come back motivated because you've hit a goal, you've hit a target. Yes, it might not be eight pounds that you wanted to lose, but I hope this offers a little bit of context. There's a huge difference between 22 days of potential change and activation compared to 13. You know, you've, you've lost a lot of days, you've lost nine days without really even thinking about it. Nine workout sessions, nine sessions that you're gonna burn between, I don't know, 200 and 400 calories in each one. You don't think that's gonna have an effect, it is. And I think this helps make a lot more sense to a lot of people when I do it like that. When we start scratching these days off and there will be families and there will be people out there going, well actually you could probably take an extra other couple of days off because every time I drink and I'm hung over, I don't want to do anything the next day. So then when you've turned around and had your work do and then you've turned around and gone out with all of your friends, you're then down to 11 days of potential change. And this is what it's about, you know, it's, it, it, I know it can be a little bit, it can feel a little bit OTT, but I'm one of those people who personally learns visually. I like pictures and numbers and people turn around and go, if they scratch things off, it makes sense to me. But the, the overall point is, understand that this time of the year, it's not about trying to create and, and push on and make those goals and achieve those things. A goal sometimes is about maintenance and damage limitation. It's not, that's still a huge win, especially at this time of the year. So stop torturing yourself. If you're gonna have Christmas dinner, please have it. Please have a starter, a main and a dessert. If you want some celebrations, please have some bloody celebrations. But have a number in your mind that you will allow yourself to flex between and just relax a little bit. And if it goes over that, don't lose your mind too much. Just do a little bit of activity to turn around and supplement it. But don't look at December as November or September or June when you're just about to go on holiday. It's not the same process. We don't have the same amount of time available. So don't put the same amount of pressure and emphasis on it. Um, I hope that makes sense. Again, mind fart. It's, it's farted out onto the whiteboard. That's the worst analogy I've ever used in my life. Um, but if it makes sense, please let me know below because these are just coming out of my brain from the questions and this is how I like to visualize and it makes more sense to me. Hope it offers a little bit of context and support for a lot of you guys and girls out there. By no means, please don't look at this as a negative by turning around and saying to someone who has a fat loss goal to gain five pounds isn't a problem. It isn't. You know, because it's a playoff between living your life a little bit and me being able to manage five pounds is a lot easier than me being able to manage someone who's demoralized in the new year. That's the point. Keep being awesome. Give the video a massive thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We'll be back with another bat cave soon. I am now going to go and lay in the bath because I'm in a world of pain after that workout. Keep being awesome, guys. In the next one.